So we've all had a chance to absorb everything about the Xbox showcase and really take it in and see like what was great about it, what could have been a lot better, and what was notably missing and how some of these trailers really landed it. I mean, like made me super hyped for the Xbox platform and the games coming to it. And some of the trailers just had me questioning, like, what am I looking at right now? So before we get into the video, make sure to tap like, helps out the video and all that kind of stuff. And did you know that actually almost 58% of people watch this channel are not subscribed? If you want to keep up to date with Xbox gaming and everything in between, make sure to tap subscribe and let's get right into those details. So let's start off with a strong now. Who came out on top? Who had the best showing when it came to this Xbox showcase? Well, it absolutely had to be Doom Dark Ages. Oh my God, this trailer was incredible. I mean, something about Doom trailers just get me incredibly hyped. Funny thing is when I first saw this, I thought this was gonna be the reveal of Elder Scrolls Six, but once I saw a little more demonic tones in there, I'm like, wait a minute, is this Doom? And then it absolutely was. And dude, this looks absolutely incredible. Like the emphasis, like more on melee type of combat as well, right? With like that mace you can hit people with, the Captain America shield you can throw with blades on it. Like, and you can chew up skulls and shoot people with a gun that shoots just skull pieces at people. Like that's absolutely metal AF and what would make Doom just even more Doom-like, which I didn't even think was possible. But this trailer was absolutely incredible this is what trailers need to be show some cinemax kind of set the vibe and then just show gameplay this is what a lot of trailers i think we're actually kind of missing with this showcase it's just like just show me some awesome parts about the gameplay show me some highlights well edited just like this and that's what we want to see and this is what we got this is exactly what all trailers need to do moving forward when it comes to just showcasing the game just like just show me awesome parts about the gameplay and it will get me hyped to want to jump in and play because if i could do this what i see right now on my screen well then i'm going to definitely download and play this game especially on game pass 100 that's going to happen sadly we have to wait till 2025 but i have a feeling this game is going to be well worth the wait another trailer that was a big win for me which usually like i was just talking about you want to see gameplay but i think this is such an early announcement for this game that it's understandable just only have it be a cinematic and that is gears of war e-day now this one's something i wasn't really fully expecting i was expecting a continuation of the gears franchise that we have right now which is not necessarily bad but not necessarily that exciting it would just be kind of eh kind of mid kind of feeling but what they're doing with this is gears of war e-day a prequel to the original trilogy bringing back the boys of marcus and dom which i think is absolutely the direction they need to go with this franchise uh, one play off of nostalgia but it also gives somewhat of a new experience within the gears of war franchise and i just cannot wait for what we're going to see from this game uh i mean having marcus and dom coming back into the game is just going to be absolutely just a fantastic thing for me as a gears of war boomer myself i played through one and three you know i had the feels during three during dom's scene and see him come back like i was like man am i gonna start feeling something right here i do have a few gripes with this trailer though one of them being the fact again like i said earlier the lack of gameplay but i think we are so early on i believe it's probably gonna make a 2025 type of game uh but also is it just me or do, like did anyone else see like how different marcus and dom look in this game like yeah i understand they're younger within this game but like not that much younger you know it just looks like their facial structures are completely different from what we can remember of these characters right like if you look at dom right here like that looks like dom and it looks like marcus but it doesn't really like look like them in a way let me show you what i'm talking about like you're going to tell me that this guy right here is this guy like it just his facial structure is just different from the marcus phoenix that we know and this is dom that we all know and love right like just keep an eye on like the facial structure of this character the eyebrows especially in the cheekbones compared to this like this doesn't even look like the same guy like yeah it has the same facial hair and haircut and stuff but like I, I mean, I get that they're younger, but it just doesn't really feel like that's like Marcus and Dom. I don't like it. They just look different. Does anybody else feel like that or am I just crazy? And this next game on the list here is something that I want to kind of critique about the trailer and reveal that we had, right? Because it has a significant part of the Xbox showcase as a whole, but we didn't really see much of what the game is about. And that is Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, where they spent a lot of time on this trailer showcasing this cinematic cutscene right here, which is just like a 
what, like a three to four minute like segment of the game where it's just you're just sitting here watching a movie basically which I feel like this was kind of like the long lasting segment that really kind of stuck with people like yeah you saw flashes of gameplay moments here and there like punches and gunshots and things like that but this is the meat and potatoes of the trailer and it makes me wonder like what the priorities are right when it comes to this game is this game supposed to be like pushing some kind of gameplay mechanics forward like trying to give you some really fun to play or is it something more of just like trying to be more of a cinematic movie to you to play through and i feel like that's the emphasis that they're putting on with indiana jones of the great circle it's more like these are the vibes of the movies that you know and love about indiana jones and you can now experience that first person in a game rather than like really showcasing the gameplay like these really cool levels and these new mechanics and stuff like that it's, it seems like they're really just trying to push it like hey this is like the movies and if that's what you want you'll like this game and it's one of the things i think they're kind of maybe trying to hide a little bit from like these scenes are great like these scenes are absolutely what you'd see in an indiana jones movie but this is a video game right and i understand like some games can kind of get by with being a little more cinematic than focus on gameplay i think of games like hellblade right but it's something like this like i think they just try to mask the gameplay a little bit too much because i want i still don't know like how this game is going to play i get the vibes like yeah this is strictly indiana jones and they absolutely nailed it right but like, what's the game like? I don't really know. Now the trailer I felt like had very odd choices when it comes to their presentation is Dragon Age Veilguard. Now I do know that the title recently changed from Dreadable to Veilguard. The vision change of this game went from like a live service type of thing to a typical RPG. But after watching this trailer, I don't really know what kind of game it is. I haven't really played a Dragon Age game. I've played Mass Effect games. And I really enjoyed those. But we saw zero gameplay and we saw all the types of characters. But from someone who hasn't played Dragon Age, I was like, is this like an action hero type of game that you play as these type of hero characters? And it's not an RPG game? I don't know. They said they had a sneak peek of the gameplay of Veilguard. And they said, don't worry, it's going to be a good game. You know, if you like Dragon Age, if you liked Mass Effect, you're going to like this game. Now, I've never played a Dragon Age game before, but I've played all the Mass Effect games. And I've been re told repeatedly that if I liked Mass Effect, you'll love Dragon Age. And I just haven't really had a chance to get into them. But for after watching the trailer from what I saw, I wasn't even quite sure what kind of game it was supposed to be, right? Like, is this like, I was expecting like an RPG type of game, but then all the classes that you would play as in a game like this were showcased as like hero characters basically. And I was like, wait, is this like a hero action game and not really an RPG or something? We saw zero gameplay. We saw zero elements of what you are as the playable character can do in this game. And especially since I do know that this recently had a title change from Dreadwolf to Veilguard because a couple years ago, this game was originally supposed to be like a live service type of game, mimicking Anthem in some kind of way, to then pivot to just being a typical RPG type of game. But then we didn't see anything involving RPGs or gameplay or anything really besides just this list of characters that are gonna be in the game that are supposedly supposed to be your companions, but like in how, what kind of capacity, how many can I have with me? I don't know. Like I said, that's the problem with some of these really cinematic focused trailers that like, I don't know what this game is supposed to be. And it's releasing this year. That's what the most concerning part about is, but the uh, change in vision and also the lack of gameplay being showcased makes me really worried about what we're gonna see with Dragon Age. And it res that re my same feeling apparently resonates with the community as well. Because on the Dragon Age YouTube channel, the like to dislike ratio, not doing so great. Again, yeah, this isn't 100% accurate, but you can understand the overall ratio that yeah, people are not happy about what they saw with Dragon Age. And also people in the comments saying like, is this what Duncan did for? The music choices were just not on par with it need to be. The only thing missing is a pre-order bonus with 1200 premium dragon credits and an exclusive hat for your character, which is like, oh my God, that's so true. And then, oh yes, Baldur's Gate 3 looks more like Dragon Age than Dragon Age itself. What is this, is Dragon Age Suicide Squad? Like, ooh. That's gonna hurt quite a bit right there for sure. And the trailer definitely didn't do it justice. Hopefully the gameplay can recover it because I want this game to do well. I want all games to be great, but you know, not all of them are gonna be, you know, home runs. Now for me, there were two extremely notable missing in action franchises within this entire Xbox showcase. And that is one, 
Halo. There was zero Halo to be showcased in this Xbox showcase, right? The one of the flagship titles of Xbox, the title that made Xbox the platform that it is, like that carried it into the next few generations. And it was just nowhere to be seen at all. Now, personally, I had no expectations of Halo to be showcased, but seeing that we saw games that were gonna be released this year in 24, and even some games that were gonna be released in 25, and even some games had zero release dates announced with this. So it makes me wonder like how far along in the process 343 and apparently supporting studios are in the works when it comes to creating the next Halo experience. We have heard a lot of leaks rumors about Xbox making a CE remake in the Unreal Engine to be able to potentially be put on to PlayStation as well, which would be a fantastic addition, but it seems like nothing is really ready to be showcased when it comes to Halo related content. Now, some people kind of extrapolated on this saying like, well, if we didn't see any Halo content and they were talking about 24 and 25 years of release dates, that means we're not getting a Halo to 2026? Maybe, maybe not. We do know that there have been Halo projects in the works since 2022. So 343 and Associated Cooks have been cooking right now. It just kind of depends. Maybe just at this time, there isn't anything to showcase, but maybe they can save it for 2025, right? For like a CE remaster, right? To come in, be the 24 year anniversary, kind of an odd number to do it on, but it'd be in like an Unreal Engine. It would look pretty sweet. It'd be something that one plays on nostalgia, which is really the only way to grab an easy W for the Halo franchise, even though personally, I would like something brand new to do within the Halo games. Like it's still my favorite franchise. I'm still a Halo fanboy from, you know, the down depths of my soul, but I just wish that there was something that we could see when it comes to anything Halo. I mean, like just something a little more reassuring for us, right? Rather than just being so concerned about like what's happening next. That's the biggest issue right now we have with as Halo players. Like we don't know if it's gonna be one year, two years, three years, five years until the next Halo experience. We have no clue. I just hope we get to find out what the heck's happening with Halo right now, right? Because we do know that 343 are shifting away from Halo Infinite. The 10 year plan for Halo Infinite is just not happening, guys. It's just not going to happen. There is an end date for Halo Infinite. We don't know exactly when that's going to be. My expectation is going to be this year for the end of the live service, but we kind of have to wait and see what happens. As we do know, like I said, 343 are currently working on other multiple other projects right now. So the next major Halo title sounds like also this remake that's currently in the works right now for Combat Evolved being remade possibly in Unreal Engine as well. So there is stuff happening with this franchise, but I just I don't think it was anything right now that can be showcased to get people excited. Maybe just like maybe it could still be a release in 2025. Just don't have anything ready at this moment. But of course, once we get some actual information of what's happening with Halo, I've seen some leaks of rumors growing about Halo 7 and the development of that game. Like right now, it's all kind of just hearsay, leaks and rumors, nothing really substantial, nothing to even really talk about. Now, I understand my next one that I was kind of surprised we didn't see anything from was a bit more of a home run. It was kind of my big like wild prediction for this showcase. And it was going to be Elder Scrolls 6. We haven't heard a single bit of information about Elder Scrolls 6 since it was announced. Like this trailer right here, this isn't anything. This is nothing. This is just a way to get people excited for the recruit developers to work on Elder Scrolls. That's all this trailer was for. It wasn't for players. It wasn't for us to like speculate on or anything like that. It's just like Bethesda is just a way of letting us know. It's like, hey, it's coming eventually. But when that's going to happen, we don't really know. So like if we know that's not going to happen in 2024, likely not in 25, so maybe 2026 is when we could get Elder Scrolls 6 released for us, which would be kind of insane because you guys probably don't remember that this trailer was announced way back, way, way, way back. I'm talking June 10th of 2018, way, way back. And I thought with Starfield's release already past us, guys, that they can probably start looking towards the future, right? I, like, I know we did, we had Shatter Space, which Shatter Space was probably the best visuals I've ever seen in from a Bethesda game. But what's the next big thing coming from Bethesda, right? It's either gonna be a Fallout game or Elder Scrolls 6, right? But if this trailer was released back in 2018 and they're still cooking, like it's gonna be maybe like, 10 years 
after the announcement of this game, we might actually see Elder Scrolls 6 available for us to play, which would be kind of insane. And they have another possibly 10 years until like what we get Fallout 5, which would be like 2035 or something like that. That's even more insane. So Bethesda and Microsoft need to figure out some way to increase this pipeline of content or either hire more people, bring in some more support studios or something because you can't have these golden gems, these golden gooses of franchises just kind of sitting around and just eventually releasing like once every decade. Now probably one of the more meh trailers that we got for one of the biggest games that were coming out in now 2025 it was announced for us guys is Fable, which this trailer is kind of very much, pretty much the exact same thing we got back in 23, but this time with some different characters showcasing a little bit more of the game, right? We saw at least some segments of gameplay compared to previously. We had like quick time events that were flashed in front of the screen and considered gameplay, which I, to me doesn't really count that same kind of experience. But at least we got a chance to really get see what the visuals are like right here you see with our main character walking around like in the world right and going into like a conversation scene like this is if this is what the visuals of this game are going to look like then it's going to be incredibly immersive and something people are going to want to jump in just experience the world right if these are the actual like gameplay visuals count me in dude like this game would be amazing to actually jump in and play i mean so far like the tone of the game feels pretty good the graphics are amazing. Again, we still haven't really seen any form of gameplay. At least the storytelling seems pretty good, which seems to be, again, the biggest emphasis about Fable is the kind of pseudo humor with the game and the storytelling and the environments. They don't really put a whole lot of emphasis on the gameplay. We saw some little bits of it here and there. So it was like enough to go, okay, that's what we can expect for this kind of game when it comes to what you can do in it. Uh, but again, the major emphasis is one, the storytelling of the environment, the characters, and the graphical fidelity of this. Some of the abilities in this do look pretty freaking awesome. Like, that was pretty brutal right there. I'm glad to see that Playground Games are cooking. They're taking their time, making sure when they do release this game, hopefully it's fully cooked. Again, we just kind of have to wait and see a little bit. Now, one of my most anticipated games, which I haven't been hearing the best news about, but after seeing this trailer, it's been a little bit more reassuring, but has made me provide a lot of questions, which was the Perfect Dark game, which again, me as a gaming boomer, I am super excited about this. I have very fond memories of playing Perfect Dark on the Nintendo 64 back in the day and loving that game so much. And this definitely seems like kind of somewhat captured that vibe a little bit, but it's also very different. Very different as in it seems to put a lot of emphasis on uh, the espionage side of things, right? Like being stealthy, sneaking around. I've seen a lot of people make a lot of comparisons to Deus Ex Human Revolution, which kind of gives me the same vibes that they're watching this as well. And like it seemed to like to not really put a whole lot of emphasis on the shooter aspect of it, which is what I loved Perfect Dark and Nintendo 64 it was amazing for. It was basically GoldenEye 64, but like with sci-fi elements, which is exactly fits my vibe totally as a Halo fan, right? But one thing I thought was really interesting were like these parkour scenes, right? Like, I don't really see why there was a need for these to be in the game, because all the environments that we saw for this Perfect Dark game were very much like tailored experience, right? Like you, you're supposed to go here, you're supposed to go to this point, you're supposed to jump on this, walk along that, and then climb this, right? Why? have the parkour elements thrown in there when you could just gone that same type of route but just like with a catwalk or something is it just to make the traversal maybe a little more entertaining rather than just kind of just walking around from place to place I, I can only really see like traversal like that being very useful or fun is when like it's in, used in the same kind of style as like mirror's edge or something like that if there's some kind of freedom to the movement to kind of choose how you want to go throughout the world but it seems like from what we saw when it comes to this trailer that it's a very crafted experience right it doesn't really seem to be like an open world type of game maybe it is i don't know i didn't get that from the trailer from what i saw from this trailer it's like you go from one scripted location to the next right these are all very crafted experiences to have which is nothing wrong about that as well as long as long as these experiences the gameplay mechanics that you set up within this game are fun to play I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, but the one thing I also thought was really odd was the lack of gun variety. We saw like a stun mechanic and like a ballistic mechanic when it comes to this pistol. I'm assuming there will be other guns, but we don't really know. But that was one of the cool things about Perfect Dark was like the wide, insane variety of guns, right? That really kind of pushed 
the limitations of what like a weapon can be within a shooter which it was so cool back then like think of like the laptop gun or like the farsight back in the nintendo 64 days like those were guns were wild and the fact that we only saw like a pistol that can kind of change its ammo from like stun or to kill makes me kind of hope that there is something a little bit more when it comes to uh the weaponry within perfect dark i would like to see a little bit more uh, I don't think we saw a re release date for this game, so it's going to be quite some time. We do have Crystal Dynamics who's jumped in to help out the initiative when it comes to the development of this game. Because there's been a lot of ups and downs with it. A lot of people have come and gone when it comes to the initiative. A lot of high hopes when it comes to this game. I just hope it kind of pays off. From what we're seeing right now, it could be pretty good, but it seems like it's going to be highly on rails. We'll see if there's how much player urgency it is gets involved with this game. I just need to see a little bit more. There are some interesting aspects of it, but again, just maybe like next year we can maybe get some more detail, like what really is going to be in this game. I don't really know, but I just hope we get to see a little bit more. And you know we had to talk about Call of Duty Black Ops. Now, there really isn't much to talk about, right? It's Call of Duty. Call of Duty is the, basically the same every year, but it seems like this time around, it actually is a little bit more. It actually has me a little bit excited about playing Call of Duty this year. Now they did spend a lot of time emphasizing the new animations and different types of quality of life improvements, right? Showcasing some highlights from the campaign as well. Kind of also reaffirming what we saw from a lot of the leaks. Remember saying that it's going to be Raven Software running the campaign, which it absolutely fell in line where then we have Treyarch running the zombies and multiplayer side of things. And it also sounds like, again, they confirmed a lot of the leaks of some open world missions, but it also makes it in some more crafted missions as well. Hopefully that plays out a little better. They weren't really that great within Modern Warfare 3 for the open world stuff. Uh, it's kind of like more crafted narrative, Michael Bay, shoot em up kind of movie experiences. Uh, but from what I've seen, this actually got me excited. Like I'm actually looking forward to playing Black Ops 6 this year. It's going to be on Game Pass, so I'm absolutely going to play. It is, after watching this, makes me want to go back and play some of the more popular uh, Black Ops games because they were just so good. Like Black Ops 1 is still my favorite Call of Duty of all time. And if they're able to capture that in some kind of capacity, I'd be just so excited about it. Like even the cover art here replicates what we saw back on Black Ops 1, right? That same type of pose. I hope they can try to capture that similar type of vibe. But you also could see how they broke down this trailer, right? In timeline sides, right? You get the intro and they had a big section right here talking about the story campaign discussion points right here. Basically kind of telling you like, yeah, we're to utilizing the Cold War storytelling, but bringing it over to Black Ops, bringing some of the new characters back, re or returning characters to Black Ops 6. And a big section right here of movement overview, character overview, HUD overview as well, progression overview, and then like a, a minute, literally like a minute of multiplayer, and then a little bit of zombies as well. But like a good portion of this was really just like quality of life improvements, like movement and changes, right? You have the omnidirectional kind of movement that they added into the game, uh, character overview when it comes to just like animations and weapons and things like that. The HUD got like a big improvement here, which seeing all the HUD changes that they have with this game actually got me kind of excited about like what you can do with this game just because like that's one of the issues with you know so many first person shooters out there that they are so strict in like what you can have on your HUD and the fact you can actually customize how you like it's a really nice quality of life improvement now I know now like also like another quality of life improvement would definitely have to be with the movement within the game right they showcase like the smart movement kind of stuff which definitely made so then like people who are not like that apt or that you know accustomed to pressing so many buttons to do different types of movements in the game can just turn on like smart movement and then you can just run forward and then it will do all the stuff for you which i think is a really nice accessibility feature personally i don't really see myself utilizing that mainly because any kind of movement i want to control that from my end for my character like the auto lean feature that they're also kind of showcasing in this game as well it's something that i really hope that you'd be toggled off or at least i can maybe change it within like the short keys when it comes to or like in in the files when it comes to on pc it's because like i remember that I had that similar kind of thing with uh battlefield 4 and i made sure to turn off lean because i didn't want that as a feature i wanted to me to be able to control all my aspects of my character but from what i saw with it comes to this entire trailer right guys that like the campaign looks pretty exciting the setting looks great bringing back some of the favorite characters the quality of life improvements when it comes to the movement the characters the hud 
and the progression bringing back classic progression as well i think it's gonna be huge for this game you know people have been wanting it for the longest time it's just the progression right now in multiplayer right now for call of Duty, just it ain't it right now in zombies yeah they kind of hinted at it a little bit like they had a good section talking about it but they didn't really dive too much into it i think we're gonna see a lot more with comes to cod next with COD Next also being a place where they're actually going to have a chance to showcase Warzone. And all the leaks and rumors are pointing to Verdansk coming back for Black Ops 6 Warzone. Okay, we'll just have to wait and see. And I want to leave you guys with another W, right? Let's leave off on a high note. I want to showcase and talk about Stalker 2, guys. This trailer was fantastic. This one, again, presented the vibes of what you want to accomplish with the game, right? Showcasing the graphics the vibes of the game and also the gameplay of it as well you can see just like right straight up like that's what it would look like jumping into the game this is what it looked like you playing the game which is exactly what i think most trailers need to really focus on more of and this is a fantastic job again it gets me really hyped i have actually never played a stalker game but after watching this trailer makes me want to go on game pass and go play stalker one because this looks visually amazing it looks like an absolute like cool like survival kind of vibe right there and i think it just totally checks out you get to walk around these environments see the gameplay see the enemies you play against leave a little bit of mystery as well which is exactly what you need to do when it comes to these trailers and so like count me all in for stalker 2 if it's in, since it's going to be on game pass guys i'm definitely going to be playing it and i hope you guys will as well Hey guys, if you enjoyed this type of video, make sure you tap like, let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you made it this far in the video, you are a real one right there. And if so, as always, leave a green heart in the comments down below. I do find all the green hearts and try to like them as well so I can recognize who are the real ones in the chat. If you guys missed any content from me recently, check out this video right here. And I appreciate you all for watching. Thank you all for coming by. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.